Well, continuing our talk with Mr North, uh, Chairman of Radio Manx Limited, um, let's talk about the staff changes. You, you, you had to make uh, some people sort of redundant, but in fact you're not because they carry on as freelance presenters. What's that all about? We uh, put to Treasury uh, last year, because the budgetary stuff starts in sort of June, July every year for the following year, and we put up several suggestions to Treasury after their indication uh, of what they were looking for for this next year. And we did that and we told them quite clearly that to stand still we needed about another 50,000 because of course just for this next year alone we have got depreciation of probably in the region of 75,000 on the equipment that we have. All right, most of it's written off in capital on the building um, because the, all the things that have been done to this building don't add to the value of the building which we own but the actual studios will be depreciated and uh, those studios that amount of money of course we have to find we had to find about three years ago 83,000 additional on the pension from the company's contribution as per Treasury and all of the departments had to do that now all those things we've had to find uh, as we we've been going along in the last two or three years so the indication this last year and we gave them all the figures they knew exactly what was going to happen if we had X Y or Z and we put to them a fairly strong uh, case for retaining it at least with a 50,000 uh, pound addition uh, and I'm, uh, 50 I'm, I'm uh, I can't remember the exact figure uh, but anyway uh, then suddenly they ignored that totally and this is not just Manx Radio this is across government I suspect because Treasury decided on a figure and council ministers uh, probably decided this and I know because you know, I've been there uh, as far as I'm concerned we suddenly from a break even that we could just survive and have quite a large loss Treasury said to us no you have to run because if we got a letter from Treasury saying yes you can operate at a loss they said no we don't want that uh, you have to find it and we're going to cut you by another 77,000 okay. now that means we, we were 185 I think it was almost 200,000 difference but back, back, back to my question here the people who were working one day on staff and it's unusual yes. to have so many staff announcers on radio stations. You agree with me on that, don't you? It's, it's unusual these days to see so many staff announcers. They're all carrying on, but they're just going to be paid on a freelance basis. Well, they're basis. not all carrying on. What we did was, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give it to you. Uh, uh, what we did was we had to make eight people redundant. And we created two new positions because there were two news editors to cover the whole day from six to six in the evening. Why and, two and, news editors? Another question. And, well, be, because that was decided. Uh, you know, people, we've had presenters, Paul, and I'm sure you didn't in your day here, presenters working six days a week, no overtime. We wanted to try and get down to five day a week for them. They haven't been able to do that. And we wanted to start paying overtime. Can't do it because we haven't got the money to do it. And this is all. But you've gone from two news editors to one now. Life well, goes yes, on. You've yes, got your. You, yes, and these. As far as the, the two news editors were concerned, Yes, we've brought that into one. And the planning of all the programmes, we have a new appointment there. Now, the eight that were made redundant, I think six have been taken back on on uh, contract. And which freelance contracts are the way forward with most radio stations now throughout the British Isles. Uh, and it's, it's almost going a full circle as to where it was when we first started uh, 40, 50 years ago. And I have to say, I... Uh, we had to tell all the staff and we brought in temporary staff to look after the studios and uh, they I had every member of our staff uh, contract and permanent in the room in the in the, the meeting room downstairs and uh, Anthony told them for the first time just exactly what was going to have to happen and I was there and I stood by them you know and just told them that I'm afraid you know, this is how it has to be. But they, they're doing the same jobs as before. They're just going to be working freelance. So will the, the public notice any difference? At this stage, no. So couldn't you have done this years ago? Uh, no, because, well, if you want to start chopping people... Uh, I'm just thinking say, about... What, what, what's happened basically is a lot of those people have lost their pension rights. 
We have been trying to improve the working standards here, not decrease them. As far as we're concerned, as a board, and, and also, I mean, there are four uh, non-exec directors, of which I'm one as a chairman, and there are four executive directors. And all of us unanimously realised that this is what we had to do. And as far as the Manx Radio Limited is concerned, well, that is, we've been trying to improve, as I say, the, the, the staffing standards, because uh, overtime is just a simple thing you would think of. Which government departments don't pay overtime? To normally, I'm not talking about the management now, I'm talking about normal. Uh, we have been trying to find the money for that for several years. Well, we have been trying to stop six-day working. Talking about money, Mr Cannon, before he, he left, the, Mr Cannon Senior, asked some questions about payments here at Radio Max Limited. Yes, he asked yes. bands, he didn't ask for people's salaries, yes, yes. and you refused to give that information to government. Can you explain that one? Why would you not let we, those we, bands it's, go? It's in the, those bands are in the, uh, well, you didn't. In the annual report. You didn't, it was not answered. You, it yeah, said yeah. it was confidentiality. I, I'm sorry, they're in the annual report, but to give individual... No, it was they, banding. You asked for bandings, and, and uh, you didn't... Yes, well, we gave, we gave what was in the annual report, because, don't forget... I mean, what are you hiding? Or what, what, we're not hiding anything, right. but, but, for instance, you probably, if you were working for another radio station, would love to know those figures. And it's, a, it's commercial, normal commercial practice. You understand what I'm saying, though, because you're government, you're slightly more no, responsible to give information, aren't you, to the public? No, I don't. I don't. No, if, if the government need those figures... Well, David Cretney was surprised he couldn't get it. He, I mean, he's, well, he's that's, that. that's the first I've heard. I didn't know he was surprised. We need to check hand side, but it was definitely... Yes, you, well, the question wasn't answered. I, I'm not... Uh, but what figures were not provided that people in the public were really interested. Individual salaries? No, it was banned.